Welcome to Stress Management, Techniques to Reduce Anxiety. I'm Erin Smithers, and I'm the Information Referral Coordinator with the New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project. I've listed my phone number and email. If you have any questions about the slide or if you just want to reach out, please feel free to do so. And let's get started. So to understand how to manage stress and anxiety, it's important to understand what stress and anxiety are. Stress is a state of mental or emotional strain or tension resulting from adverse or very demanding circumstances. It is something that causes mental strain and it is something that can cause you to become tense or anxious and it can cause you to worry. Anxiety is a feeling of worry, nervousness, or unease, typically about an imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome. A desire to do something, typically accompanied by unease, and it's also a nervous disorder characterized by a state of excessive uneasiness and apprehension, typically with compulsive behavior or panic attacks. So now that you know what stress and anxiety are, it's important to know what causes it. If you know what causes it, you might be able to prevent it. So some causes of stress and anxiety could be life changes you're going through, that you're not getting enough sleep, that you have an unhealthy diet, that you're going through some financial issues, that you're sick or you suffered an injury, that you went through or are currently going through a traumatic event, that you're afraid of something, that there's just normal hormones going through your body, or it could just be everyday events like sitting in traffic or having an argument with someone that you care about, um, worrying about work issues or, or work that needs to be done, traveling, even if you're traveling for a vacation that can still cause stress, and weather. Today I'm recording this and it is snowing outside and I know that a lot of people are stressed because of this. These aren't all of the reasons why you might be stressed or have anxiety, but after a while, it's going to start showing up on your body in different forms. It can affect how you function. It can start to give you headaches. It can cause you to become fatigued or the opposite. It can cause you to have difficulty sleeping. It can make it hard to concentrate. It can give you an upset stomach or make you irritable or angry. It can start to show signs of depression. It can cause high blood pressure. It can cause heart issues. It can cause you to gain weight or to even lose weight. And it can start showing up on your skin. It can cause you to have rashes or hives or break out. So it just affects your body in many, many different ways. And again, this isn't all of the ways, but these are, these are some of the most common ways that it can start affecting your body negatively. And so something that a lot of people feel when they start to get anxious or stressed out is that they're alone. But actually, stress and anxiety affects everybody. It affects every single person. But the good news is that there's steps that you can take to get rid of it or to fight against it. We're going to go through some of those steps now. Here are eight tips to help you manage your stress and anxiety. The first is everybody's favorite, of course, exercise. It might not be everybody's favorite, but it is something that everybody should do. Because when you exercise, your body's going to start to feel better, but your mind is also going to start to feel better. It's going to help you release all of that anger and tension that you have when you're working out real hard. It also helps to release chemicals in your brain that act as a natural painkiller. It's going to help you get sleep and it's definitely going to help reduce stress. Some people also find a sort of euphoria where it helps them just kind of clear their mind after a while. They're just focusing on working out and they're not thinking about anything else and that's going to go a long way to help reduce stress. It could also be just as little as 30 to 60 minutes a day of exercise will help you see a big improvement in how you start to react to different things around you and how your body starts to behave and also how your mind starts to behave differently. The next tip is one of my favorites to do when I start to feel anxious, but it's surrounding yourself in nature. 
Being surrounded by the beauty of nature can boost your mood, and even just five minutes can help reduce anger and stress. So this might just be the fastest way to help calm yourself down if you start to get those feelings of anxiety. Being in a calm environment can help lower your blood pressure, it can help your heart rate, and it can help with muscle tension. I know that sometimes just getting out there and not even just going for a walk, but even just sitting on a bench in a park and just kind of relaxing and looking at everything around you, watching the trees, or if you're by water, that can be really beautiful and relaxing. That can help you just kind of put things into perspective as well. The next tip that I have is also an extremely easy way to help reduce anxiety. And it's breathing techniques. It's learning how to control your breath to help your mind calm down a little bit. So deep breathing techniques can help refocus your anxiety and help bring your stress down because it's one of the best ways to calm down. It sends a message to your brain that it needs to take a minute, it needs to slow down, and it needs to relax. So let's try some now. I want you to just take a deep breath in and hold it. Try to hold it for a second or two and then just let it go and breathe it all the way out. So let's try it again. Just take a deep breath in and hold it for a second and release it and let it out. One more. Take a deep breath in and hold it and then let it out. And already, just after three breaths, I feel more relaxed and I feel more calm. So this can be something that you can do that works really well and really fast. Sometimes when you're feeling anxious or stressed out, you don't have a lot of time to calm down or or your patience level is not that high, so you want something that's gonna work right away. This is one of the fastest things you can do to help that. So the next tip is to immerse yourself in a hobby. Doing something that you love can help bring a sense of joy and freedom. Hobbies can provide relief from overwhelming feelings by taking you out of the situation, and it can also be an outlet for built up stress. So this works in two different ways. It helps by taking you out of whatever stressful situation that you're in or something that you're thinking about. And it can also help get rid of any pent up stress that you have, um, it, just holding on to it inside because that's not good as well. So it's going to help you develop a skill. It's going to help you kind of feel independent. You're doing something that you love. And as you see from the graphic, it can be anything. Anything that you like to do that is going to just make you feel better, make you feel happier. And if some of them involve any of the other tips, like going for a hike, going swimming, or uh, being out in nature, or exercising. There's a bike on there, playing some sports, that's going to be really great too because you're crossing off two ways to help you reduce stress. It could also be something like painting or writing or listening to music or even writing a song. A lot of people I know like to play drums or play guitar, so that could really help take you out of the moment. You could also learn how to play an instrument. That could be a new skill that you pick up. That could also bring you a lot of joy. So it's really just anything that's going to help take you out of the moment. It's going to help give you a sense of confidence and freedom, and it's going to help reduce your stress. Um, it could be something that could be done all day. It could be something that's just done for a few minutes. So whatever helps you. The next tip is to live healthy. This goes hand in hand with exercising because you want to help your body work properly. We talked a little bit about how you should think of your body as a machine. Well, eating healthy and getting enough sleep is going to also help your body work properly and function how it should. Healthy foods contain valuable nutrients and vitamins that help regulate your body and your brain. If you aren't getting the proper foods, your body can react poorly and this can actually create stress. 
Getting enough sleep is also important to keep your body functioning properly. Negative feelings and actions can be heightened if your body is working overtime to try to fill in the gaps of missing sleep and vitamins. This can cause that long list of ailments that we talked about earlier. So I know that uh, it could be catch-22. If you are stressed out, it can cause you to either not sleep or to be tired. But a lot of times, a good night's sleep is just the best way to fight against stress and anxiety. If you're having trouble with that, there are a few things that you can do, like making sure that you're not having caffeine or chocolate or sugar right before bed. You also want to try to avoid having heavy meals right before bed. This can disrupt your sleep as well. And exercising can help your body become tired, and that can help you get a nice solid night of rest. And eating healthy. Eating healthy is also going to go a long way to helping your body kind of get back into a routine that it needs where it's going to sleep at a certain time and waking up at a certain time. It can help you also stay asleep once you are asleep. Um, I have a separate training on getting better sleep. If you're interested in that, please reach out to me and I can send that to you as well. The next tip might be one of the hardest things to do, especially when you are stressed and anxious, but it's just to stay positive. So thinking positive thoughts about yourself and promoting a happy self-image will help you have more self-confidence and it can help fight off damaging feelings. In negative conditions, try to see the best in the situation. This will help you feel better about what is happening and about things you cannot control. So this is kind of a two-parter. So you want to first start thinking positive thoughts about yourself because you are a fantastic person and everyone should feel that way. Whether you gain that confidence by talking to yourself in the mirror and pointing out your, your positive traits and all the things you like about yourself or just once in a while thinking about, you know, I am kind of awesome. I am a good person because everybody has at least one awesome quality about themselves. And right now, I want you to think of something awesome about yourself or something that you love about yourself. This is gonna help you build a really solid confidence. And that is going to go a long way to help fight off stress and anxiety when you come up against issues like someone criticizing you or life just happening and you bump heads and you argue with someone. If you have a strong self-confidence in yourself, you're going to be okay. You're going to know that their words and outside opinions and views don't really reflect who you are. Because just because someone else might be having a bad day and say something bad about you, that doesn't mean that there is something bad about you. You have to remember that you are a really good person and you have to kind of, like I said, fight off those damaging feelings and know that that's not really who you are. So right now, if you could take a moment and just say to yourself one positive thing that you like about yourself, whether it's that you're funny or that you are really good at making your friends smile or that you're a hard worker or that you're really good at a skill, just something because everybody has more than one, but definitely at least one awesome quality about themselves. And then the second part is in a negative condition, in a negative situation, um, it's going to help you if you stay positive about the situation because there's a lot of things in life that we can't control and kind of trying to find something good, a good outcome or a positive in this bad situation is going to help you not feel as bad about what is happening to you. Sometimes, like I said before too, people are going to criticize you or something's not going to go right. Maybe you're at work and something went wrong at work you're gonna to start to feel down on yourself. But trying to find a positive in the situation can help you think positively overall. So say you messed up a paper that you were writing for school, or you messed up a job for work. Try to find something positive like, well now I know how to fix this solution and I can show my boss or my teacher that I'm a hard worker and I'll fix what I do. Also, even just apologizing and owning up for your mistake can give yourself 
give yourself some more confidence. And like I said before, everybody has awesome things about themselves. And you should have a really good self-confidence. Next tip is to surround yourself with support. This is a really good way to just feel good. Spending time with people who care about you elevates the happy chemicals or the oxytocin in your brain and it lowers the stress hormone, cortisol. So when you surround yourself with people you trust and people you care about, you don't feel alone. And this can help you get through some really tough times. It's also a really good idea to have outside opinions if you're having any problems because they can give you insight you might not be able to think of yourself. So just being around your friends, being around your family, or even your coworkers, someone who cares about you, someone who understands you, and someone who is in a healthy relationship with you can just make you feel happier, more confident, and just better about yourself. It's also great to not feel lonely, and spending time with people who care about you can help make you feel less lonely. So the last tip is something that can be done five minutes a day, 60 minutes a day, just however much time you have, but it does revolve around making sure you have a space that's quiet and a space where you're by yourself. And it's just taking a break for meditating. So just take a minute to reassess the situation that you're in. Give yourself some time to calm down if you're angry or upset. Step out of the situation. Use this time to try those breathing techniques or do a hobby you like, listen to music, or go for a walk in nature or go sit out underneath your favorite tree. Meditation can also be a really good way to clear your mind of clutter, chaos, or any negativity. And it can be a quick way to become present and calm. For me personally, this is something I always try to do when I start to feel overwhelmed. If I start to feel like a situation is going to turn negative, or if I just start to get really upset, which everyone does, I try to take a minute, I either walk away, or if I'm on the phone, I, you know, I ask to call them back. I get myself out of that situation. Even if it's just going into the next room or staying where I am and kind of mentally taking a break from whatever was making me upset. This is going to really help lower your anxiety. It's gonna help make you think clearly about your problem or your situation. It's also going to help you really feel a sense of calming and quiet, which sometimes we all need. Even if nothing is going wrong, even if we're not arguing with someone or we're not even stressed, it's a good idea to just take a minute to experience calm and quiet. Sometimes life can just be so fast-paced and stressful that everybody just needs that. So we're going to try a five-minute meditation. I'm going to play one for you and just listen. Make sure you're in an area where you're not going to have interruptions you're by yourself, you can turn the lights off if you want, you can keep the lights on, whatever makes you comfortable. You could be sitting or even laying down. Whatever is going to help you just relax because you don't wanna think about what your body is doing, you don't wanna think about what's going on outside of your mind. Right now we're just gonna close our eyes and we're going to quietly listen and meditate. Welcome to Time Out, a quick guided relaxation to de-stress. Due to the relaxing nature of this recording, please do not listen while driving or operating machinery. Only listen when you can truly ignore the outside world and allow yourself to relax.
You can carry out this meditation seated or lying down. Just ensure you're in a position that's comfortable for you, where you can relax with minimal effort. If you have been experiencing feelings of stress or simply want to take a time out from your daily activity, now you can let go. Feel more at ease with yourself. When you are ready, you can let your eyelids close. Take a deep breath in. Then, as you let it out, you can let go of any tension. Wherever you may have been holding that tension, in the shoulders, in the abdomen, in the face, wherever you notice it. On each out breath, feel your muscles loosening as the tension goes away, becoming more and more relaxed. If your mind wanders, if you find yourself thinking thoughts that you don't need to think, you can let them evaporate and let your attention rest on your breath. You can notice the cool, refreshing air as it enters through your nose. In with it brings you a refreshing sense of calm. As you breathe out, you can feel the muscles throughout your body feeling a deeper sense of relaxation. As your attention is gently rested on your breathing, noticing the inward breath deep down, inside, effortless relaxation. and the serene calming of the out-breath. If you find your mind wandering, that's okay. You don't need to make any effort in following your thoughts. Just keep breathing in and out. Feeling good deep inside. Breathe in and out. More and more relaxed. All stress. Whenever you find yourself feeling stress in the future, 
Remember to bring your attention to your breathing. And in your breathing, you can find your stress dissolving and feel good. As you continue with your breathing, you can slowly begin to bring your attention back into the room. Start to notice any external noises. Take your time, then when you are ready, slowly open your eyes. Again, take your time to return to full waking consciousness. How do you feel? Do you notice you feel more relaxed, more calm after that five minute meditation? The great thing about meditation is that you can do it for however long you have. If you have five minutes, do five minutes. Some people work up to doing meditating for an hour or more even. Just It's all about how much time you have getting out of the situation and kind of calming your mind. So I hope that wherever you are, you feel calm now, you feel relaxed, and you feel more confident and equipped to handle any stressful situations that may come your way. If you have any questions about anything that I said or about anything that we talked about, please feel free to reach out to me. My name again is Erin Smithers, and my phone number and my email are listed. And I hope everybody has a fantastic day. Thank you.